one. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome into the Back to 12 podcast. I am RC. That's Lyle. You know who he is. He's uh, probably rocking a color that Snoop Dogg won't like too much, but I guarantee you they like it out there in Lobo's country. Lyle, how you doing, man? Oh, doing good, man. Blessed to be in your presence. Um, you know, people can't see the hat, but, you know, you got the, the old school Mavs hat. On YouTube, on the, the side, people you know? will be loving this. Shout out to that man, Dirk. Um, even though I am a Houston Rockets fan, um, I got to show love where love is due. And so, you know, I got I got to shout out to that man, Dirk. You know, one of the greatest to do it. And it's all love. I mean, I'm still repping the Texas Tech stuff still in the background, too. You know, you got the Cliff Kingsbury, yeah. you know, signed helmet over here. Got the press pass from the Final Four football press pass over there. I can tilt it up for the YouTube crowd. I got Patty right there. And I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying to make it a little bit better. And for those that aren't watching on YouTube, you should. Yeah. You should. I don't know what you're doing at this point. Obviously, listening on Spotify, and we appreciate that as well. Be sure to hit that sub button. But on today's podcast, you know what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be men's basketball. We're in that nitty-gritty time of the year. Three regular season games left, two of them at home. And you might have noticed, Lyle, I said two when in all actuality it's technically, you know, only one home game. But I'm going to count Fort Worth and TCU as a home game for the Red Raiders because, let's be honest, it will be. Um, we'll talk about them, talk about bracketology a little bit. But first, are you staying safe in this Texas weather? Man, staying safe, trying not to go outside for any reason. Um, you know, my got a got an old school car, so you know I don't have no push start. So I got to go out there and um, when I crank it up, sit in the cold a little bit. Um, kind of remind me of my West Virginia days when I was GAing out there. This place is way too cold for me. That's why I came back. So you know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty upset about this weather. I didn't come back for this. You know, I came back for the heat. So this one, yeah. this one stings. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. Um, 100% in the sense where it's like, I want some winter, but I don't want it this bad, yeah. you know, or I don't want this much of it, I guess I should say. Um, just give me like four or five days of it and that's fine. And then we can just move on about our business and go back to, you know, the 95 degree heat. That's fine with me. Yeah. Um, just my opinion. But speaking of hot, the Red Raiders men's basketball team is hot as hell right now. One of six of their last seven they have been on a hot streak, and I will have a fun stat at the end of this. Don't let me forget this fun stat, Lyle, um, about this Texas Tech men's basketball team. But last night, as we record this on Wednesday, February 23rd, they arguably had their best game of the entire season against Oklahoma, where the Sooners were lucky to score 42 points in that game. They were lucky to get to 40, and the reason they got over 40 was because of a last-second three, or else it would have been 66-39, but instead it's 66-42. Devion Warren had an absolutely great game for the Red Raiders, and the Red Raiders seemed to be hitting their stride right after a game where they got embarrassed by Oklahoma and Norman, right? You have arguably your worst game of the year, in Norman against Oklahoma, and then arguably your best game of the year against the Sooners in the 806. And by the way, Texas Tech, for the second time in their history, will be able to say that they are undefeated at home if, if they beat K-State next Monday night. But let's just talk about this team a little bit, Lyle, in the sense of we've talked about what stands out to us, right? And there's a lot of people on social media just wondering – all right, is Texas Tech getting, I'm just going to use their word, screwed when it comes to the seeding and everything right now in bracketology? If you look around, they're either a two seed, which is great, but they're a two seed going to San Diego, or they're a three seed and they're going to San Diego. They're, they're just going to San Diego either way. And to be honest with you, I don't think the Red Raiders are complaining about going to San Diego. I just think that it would be better for the Red Raiders if they had the chance to be the two seed in the South because if you were the two seed in the South, you have the clearest chance to go to the final four. I think that a team could possibly have out there in terms of you get to stay in the state of Texas for the first two rounds, round of 64 and round of 32. Oh, and by the way, if you're the two seed in the South, you get to stay in Texas for the sweet 16 and the elite eight potentially, because it's down in the Alamo dome down in San Antonio. So I ask you this, when you think about Texas Tech right now, they have that nine next to their name. And, and to be honest with you, the AP Top 25 poll is just for fans. It really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Where do you think Texas Tech ranks? Because 
I have maybe a hot take on it, but I want to hear from you before I put my uh, scorching or maybe just good hot take out there because it's so cold around the state of Texas right now. Yeah, man, I think it really depends on the last two games. I think these these are teams that, you know, they've shown in the Big 12 that they can they can beat people, um, but they're not at the top echelon of the Big 12. So I think these last two games are, um, you know, are, are, are a tale of what where we should be. Um, so like, like I said, I don't think it's fair to um, kind of judge right now till we finish. Like I said, we lose to TCU, we lose to Kansas State. You know, we're not number two, uh, in my opinion. But like I said, maybe we win one, lose one, you know, and then we do good in the tournament. You know, we still got a chance. Kansas like City, said, right? That, yeah, that tournament plays a big, you know, we could lose the last two games and win the tournament and be a number two seed. Heck, we might even be a number one seed. I think you'd be a one. You know, but to, I, I think you'd be a one, especially if you beat Baylor and Kansas again. Right. So I, I think it's uh, too early to say on that aspect. And um, I think, like you were talking about earlier, besides location, um, I know people are like, well, there's one seed and 16, 16 seed and all this. But at the end of the day, like everyone loves March Madness because anybody could beat anybody. Um, yep. So, I, you know, that take for me is like I said, sure, would you uh, rather want to play a Winthorpe rather than playing, uh, you know, a Duke, of course. But at the end of the day, that team may get hot. It's still a, 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 a week to week deal, a game to game deal that you have to win and no one's safe. And that's what made March, March Madness so great is we see 16 um, seeds go to the Sweet 16. We've seen uh, a team to get in at the at the last minute go to the to the elite eight you know most of the time when you get to the final four you got the best teams usually are in that circle but there's been a lot of times where there's teams that can beat anybody so I think that's the greatness of March Madness is just understanding hey anybody could win you know and that's what makes the playoffs so great like I said this year if you would have if, if somebody would have bet that the Bengals would be in the Super Bowl they'd be super rich I, I don't know of many people that said hey man I know for a fact the Bengals but that's the greatness of that playoff atmosphere and um you know you still have to show up at the end of the day when you play where do you think texas tech should be ranked though like not seeding wise but just like say top 10 top five where do you think they should be ranked mm, i think i think they're about where they should be um i think it could fluctuate maybe to seven you know mm. i think seven to seven to to ten ten range uh right now just because um in my opinion, it's, it's just basketball, you play so many games, you know, and there's everybody's going to lose in basketball. There's not an undefeated team playing right now. So I just think we're, we're in that range, you know, uh, maybe six. Uh, but like I said, really, for me, I say seven to ten. I think we're in the ballpark of um, where we think. What do you think? I think you can start an argument and say that Texas Tech is the third best team in the country. And I I. I think you could also say that Texas Tech could be 10th in the country. Like, mm -hmm. I think you have to put them between three and 10. And I know that three seems really high. And by the way, this is my hot take. I think that you need to have that conversation in terms of, I think there's a clear top two teams in the country, at least in my opinion. And I know that some people won't agree with one of them, um, maybe even both. But I know for sure one of them, and I, I've looked into it last night. I said it was Purdue on the Twitter spaces, but I've kind of changed my tune after looking at it today. Um, I think Gonzaga's clearly got to be in the top two. I think that that's a must just because they have legitimately three All-Americans on that team potentially. Um, and then I think Arizona. People don't like Arizona, and I get it. The Pac-12 is one of the weaker conferences, but I think Arizona's really freaking good. I, I, I really do. I don't know how far they go. Um, but I also think that they're kind of like Texas Tech, um, but in the sense that they have a traditional point guard, so they're different in that regard. But they can switch everybody, but they have more size to do it. And by size, I mean at the center position. Imagine having three or four Daniel Bachos. Like, mm -hmm. that's what Arizona does. And now I don't think that Texas Tech can't play with them. I think Texas Tech needs to be in that conversation, but I think those are the clear two. And then if you told me Tex you had Texas Tech at three, I'd agree. Um, you know, if you made the argument good enough, same with four and five. I'll say this, if I'm being really honest about it and trying to take the bias out of it, um, and people are going to misconstrue this, like how is this unbiased? I think Texas Tech is a top five team in the country. 
Um, I, I think that when you look at what they do really, really well, there is no other team in the country. And I legit, I, I can look into the camera directly. Those on YouTube can see me on Spotify. Go check us out on YouTube, the Back to 12 podcast. You already know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I legitimately mean this. There is not another team in the country that can do what Texas Tech can do one through five in the sense that they can put a guy at the point guard position that's six, five, and they can put a guy at the center position that's six, eight, and they can switch everything. No other team can do that with their entire roster. And then you sprinkle in Daniel Bacho as a seven foot option. No other team has that in the country. I truly mean that. And, and it's one of those deals where, yeah, Gonzaga has a little bit more size and maybe they have a little bit more talent at the higher levels, right, in terms of the NBA talent. But I think Texas Tech as a unit, you could argue, is a team that works better together than any team in the country outside of Gonzaga because they know their roles and there is five or six guys any given night that can beat you, right? It doesn't, it doesn't surprise anybody if Devion Warren has the best game. It doesn't surprise anybody if Terrence Shannon has the best game, Kevin McCuller, you know, Bryson Williams, Kevin O'Banner, Adonis Arms, any of those guys, right, could take over a game and you would not be shocked by it. You wouldn't be. You would be like, oh, okay, they, it was their game. And then crazy enough, you can also say Marcus Santos Silva can go out there and win you a game with his defense and some of his passing. And then Clarence Nadalny can be your second option like he was down in Austin. So I think that this team, when you start thinking about where should this team be ranked in the AP top 25, I think you can't have them any lower than five. When it comes to seeding right now, I, I'm looking at you, CBS. Um, and I love CBS, by the way. The, how the hell do you have them as a three seed? There is no way, looking at these numbers, resume-wise, you look at Ken Palm right now, Texas Tech has the number one defense in the country, adjusted defense, and it's not close. And you're going to think, okay, listening to this, it is close because it's just .6. .6 at this point in the season is unheard of in terms of making up on the defensive side of the ball. So Texas Tech is by far going to finish – at worst, in the top three as the defensive team in the country. Offensively, yeah, they're a little inconsistent. I can get behind that logic. I think that even Coach Adams said that prior to the Oklahoma game. But when you look at what Texas Tech does at the highest level in college basketball, and again, I'm going to sound like an old grandpa with this saying right here, Lyle, what wins championships? Defense. And I will tell you this right now. I would much rather have an elite defense that I know what I'm going to get night in and night out. And my offense just has to figure it out every night than an offense that I'm depending on to win me games and a defense that is suspect. I would much rather have option a, because in the tournament, I promise you this, there is only two teams in my opinion from the big 12 that can win a national championship outside of Texas Tech. That's Kansas and Baylor. And as of right now, you have a three and one record against them and you match up great against those two squads. And if you match up great against those two squads, you match up great against anybody in the country. Prime example, Gonzaga, when you were out there in Phoenix, you probably win that game or at least have a much better chance to win that game if Terrence Shannon Jr. plays. He obviously didn't and Gonzaga is one of the best teams in the country, but you gave Gonzaga fits when you didn't have your best player on the floor. And that's something that right now, if everything goes according to plan, these last three games of the year, Texas Tech is going to have everybody healthy going into March. And that's something they haven't been able to say all season long. Yeah, you're definitely right. And, um, you know, you you hit some things I was going to say too. Like we, you know, um, last game and the, and the game before, I mean, our shooting percentage, I mean, we shot 30. Um, no, like we shot good against Oklahoma, but the game before that, um, when we were at Texas, you know what I'm saying? We shot 36%, you know, so. Um, terrible. That's, that's, that's terrible. Great. Yeah. And and the thing is, we're winning. Yep. Um, so, like I said, uh, I agree with you when you said that. At some point, they can catch fire at any time. I've been watching these high school basketball games. You know, our teams are in the in the playoffs. I watched the team. And Still in them, huh? Three, we got knocked out. Both our teams got knocked out. Oh, the third round, man. 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 I watched our girls play and I watched them miss shots for four straight quarters and then three minutes left in the fourth quarter, they didn't miss a shot, you know? So it's at any time you could get hot. Like you said, you can't turn on defense, but you can turn on offense. And at any time, um, you know, 
anybody can go. The team could catch fire. So that's always a plus. And um, like I said, I just think too, um, we're, we're, I think March Madness, the thing is getting hot at the right time. And I think that, you know, tech is getting hot at the right time. Um, and, and instead of being hot, you know, in a sense, I kind of think Kansas has been on a roll. They've been rolling. You know, I kind of like that we're gaining momentum, right? Going into March Madness, um, picking up, um, uh, picking up uh, steam and rolling. So I, I'm really excited about that because, like I said, that's all it comes down to. Teams that get hot in March Madness, um, they're going to win. It's not always the best team. It's not always the, the, the best coach team. You know, it's whoever is hot that day and shows up. And that's what it's about. You get one chance, um, you know, you get one chance to go. Either you win or go home. And uh, Is that Eminem like said, that I'm doing this podcast are, with? What'd you say? Is that Eminem that I'm doing the podcast with right now? One hey. shot, one opportunity. Hey, shout out to M, man. One <laughs> of the greatest of all time, folks. But you already know, man. It's just, I mean, I mean, like I said, I'm excited, man, to see where they land us and I think that's the great thing about March Madness, too, is you get an opportunity to show, you know, if they disrespect us and put us at the third seat, I think it's a great opportunity for us to show why we aren't. And you get that opportunity, you know, versus when you go to football, if you get a certain you get a certain rank, you don't get to prove that you are the best team. And that's the great thing about March Madness. No matter where you're ranked, no matter how they do us, you have an opportunity to show that you're a top team in the country. And like I said, I'm confident that that our boys will show up and, and do what they're, um, you know, I don't want to say what they're supposed to do, but, you know, they're going to show up and play the game that they love and um, do the things we think that they can do. So I'm, I'm super excited about it. Yeah, I, I think the crazy thing for me, and this is the crazy stat I have um, for the podcast today. So if you go all the way back to the Kansas game, Texas Tech has won seven of their last eight. The only loss that they have is that game. Um, obviously in Norman, where they just didn't show up in the second half. Let's just play the hypothetical, right? Mm -hmm. and Texas Tech wins their games to end the season at TCU, Kansas State, and Oklahoma State. They would finish the season on a 10 and 11 stretch, right? So, and we're not going to include the games in Kansas City here or anything like that. We just won't do that. Um, but let's just say they make the tournament. Do you know the last time a Texas Tech team won 16 of their last 17 games? I want to say in the 90s. 2019. Do you know what they were doing in 2019? What's that? Playing on a final Monday. So oh, if yeah. Texas Tech finishes the season, not including Kansas City, um, which I'm not in this regard because it mm -hmm. wasn't included in the 2019 one either. Um, mm -hmm. But – if Texas Tech wants to finish with the same way that uh, that team did, they would win the final game of the year and they would be 16 and 17 to end the year. Um, now, obviously, they finished 16 and two because, well, they didn't call Davide Moretti getting hit in the sack, if you know what I'm saying. Um, also, didn't foul up three, which was stupid, but um, don't get me started on that. Uh, but yeah, yeah I, I think that when you look at this team, right, like, the, and this is the discussion I've had on my Twitter um, just so often, right, and um, with so many people, and I've gotten DMs about it, I've, it's been in my mentions, whatever, is, is this team as good as 2019? That's what I was about to ask you. I'm not gonna lie. That was my next question. I was yeah, gonna like, ask you. Like, I don't think it's fair to compare any team to 2019 um, until Texas Tech wins the national championship in men's basketball, um, just because they've never done it before. They've never been what to that you, final. What do you think the difference is? What do you think the major difference is between that team and um, this team? Um, well, there's two things I think that are the major difference. Um, that team had two lights out shooters and Matt Mooney and Davide Moretti. Um, I think that the crazy part is this, and please, 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 please do not hear what I'm not saying. Jarrett Culver is better than Bryson Williams, but for their respective teams, they do very similar things. Like if you need a bucket, you know you can count on JC. If you need a bucket, you know B-Dub, we can go get you a bucket, right? So they do similar things. I think Jarrett Culver was obviously the better player, but I think that they do similar things for their teams on the offensive side of the ball where it's like, hey, if you need a bucket, I can do it in a multitude of ways. Um, 
I can go get one for you. But mm-hmm. shooting is the big difference between those two teams. Um, obviously, 19 in this year, and then a Tariq Owens. I mean, you're not going to replicate a Tariq Owens, though. I mean, they, they, there's not very many like that on the planet. So, um, but I will say this. I think that this year's team is deeper. I think that this team um, is way, and this is going to sound crazy, too. I think that this team is better suited to make a deep tournament run. And the reason why is like when you, if you go back and obviously hindsight, they did make the national championship game. But if you look at it before the tournament, right, there was a lot of skepticism that Texas Tech might lose to Buffalo in the second round because, Mm -hmm. oh, they have a flaw there. They have a flaw here. And most of that came with, you know, depth and also just really being able to switch everything because Davide Moretti, who did pick up his game at the end of 2019, was still kind of a liability defensively. Um, he didn't really totally buy in defensively until the year after. Um, so I think this year, that's the thing that's just kind of really caught my eye. A guy like Devion Warren, who was a top 10 scorer in the country at Hampton, um, averaging over 22 points a game there. Um, he's just totally bought in defensively. And that's something that I didn't know if that was going to happen this year, right? Like I knew it would happen with Bryson Williams after his comments, him saying that, hey, I'm coming here to learn how to play defense. Like I knew that that was going to happen. I didn't know if that was going to happen for guys like, you know, Devion Warren specifically, or if we were going to see him maybe just be like, oh, I'm just here to get buckets. We can worry about defense later. It's been the total opposite. And that's something that I think that's just completely different on this team that everybody can switch one through five. I don't think you could say that um, on the other team. And that's not to say that 2019 um, is worse than this year, because I think 2019 um, obviously, you got to the national championship game. You have to say they're better right now. But if we're looking at who has the deeper roster and who that I think is built better for March, I would probably say this year's team, just because there's nobody in the country that has one through 10 um, outside of maybe Gonzaga. Again, I know I've said Gonzaga a lot. This is not a Gonzaga podcast, by the way. Um, just to let you know, um, it is a Texas Tech podcast. Crazy enough, I know that I've mentioned Gonzaga just as much as Texas Tech in this. But there might be the only team out there that can really go one through 10, and you're like, okay, even the 10th guy off the bench, yeah, we know what he can do. Because right now, the 10th guy off the bench for Texas Tech is Clarence Nadaldi. Like, that's the 10th guy on your roster, and you feel comfortable with him on the floor for the most part. So mm-hmm. um, I think that that's something that Texas Tech has that a lot of teams don't have. And I will say this too, the the shooting has been inconsistent, but positive regression is a real thing. Like Kevin O'Banner has proved that Kevin O'Banner will get hot when Texas tech needs him to get hot. Devion Warren will get hot when he needs to get hot. Same with Adonis arms. You have guys on this team that have played in big games before, including Terrence Shannon, Jr. Kevin McCullough, Clarence Ndalny, Marcus Santos Silva. Um, You obviously have Kevin O'Banner, right? you have big shot makers and you have experience on this team. And that's more than a lot of teams can say now, because a lot of these guys have transfers that haven't gotten to play in big games or they're just younger and they haven't gotten to play um, in prominent games. So I think Texas tech is in a really, really good spot. And honestly, at this point, if Texas tech handles business, whatever happens in Kansas city really doesn't matter. I, I don't care if they lose in the first round of it because the committee's already shown that, those games can only help you in the conference tournament. They can't hurt you. Um, right. I think if Texas Tech handles business and wins the last three games of the year, they're a two seed and they're playing in Fort Worth because there's no way that the committee can look at the resume of Texas Tech a- after it all, right, in my opinion, and say, okay, let's see here, es- especially, and I will say this, especially if Kansas beats Baylor on Saturday. And by the way, every Texas Tech fan should be a Jayhawks fan on Saturday because if you want to win that second seed or be the two seed in Fort Worth in the South and have a chance to go to San Antonio, you need Baylor to lose that game. Um, and you will pass them in net and you'll have to handle business, obviously, if you're the Red Raiders. But I think that that happens. And I think Texas Tech, if you ask me today, will be the two seed in the South and they will have an opportunity to stay in the state of Texas all the way to the final four if they get that far. Yeah, and I agree with everything you said. Uh, the only thing I, I was going to add to that is just I feel like we're more athletic. Um, yeah, you know, uh, and you know, it's no disrespect to those guys. It's a national champ uh, championship game. I mean, there ain't been hardly no teams. Uh, I don't know how many teams have ever even gone before them. Uh, but 
uh, overall besides, you know, Tyreek, maybe Culver, um, not maybe Culver. Um, you know, those guys are just a little bit more versatile um, when it comes, like you said, defensively, but also offensively. So, um, like I said, you know, uh, Mooney did a great job for us. Like I said, he, he, you know, I, if I ever get to meet him, I'll tell him, you know, he was he's a Texas Tech great for sure. Um, but, you know, just those guys are, I feel like they're able to move a little more, um, get to the cup a little more. Um, and I, I think that's that's what Texas Tech um, makes Texas Tech so hard to guard. You know, like you said, they get hot when they need to get hot, but also you jump out there, they'll drive to the hole too. And they're able to finish or get to the free throw line. And so I think um, these guys, I love watching them play the athleticism. Like you said, one through 10, everybody, everybody can do it. Anybody can switch. And, and like I said, that's why we've held teams. Um, I was just looking, we've held teams to the lowest um, uh, throughout the Big 12. You go back and look, and um, I was looking at it earlier, like even OU. I don't think OU has not scored more than 42 points in any other game. I could be wrong. Like I said, don't quote me on that, people. But like I said, 42 is a, is a, is a low number. Um, and those oh, that's guys, the lowest like said, any Big 12 team has scored all year. In yeah, any game. And, we, and we play man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a full game of switching, of going. That's tough. Um, and, and, you know, that shows also – um, the great job that that strength and conditioning uh, team is doing to have those guys be able to do that because that's tough. I watch uh, the NBA all the time. Dudes don't be playing man like that. You know, they'll take three three series off and go play offense, play a hard series. Take, these dudes on every single possession are playing hard, switching, making it tough as heck just for those guys to even put the ball up, let alone score. So um, that's been the most exciting thing is just the unselfish play of, of the team. Um, you know, sometimes I think we're too unselfish, but, yeah, you know, that's a different story. But, you know, we got guys will make that extra pass. Sometimes we don't need to. Sometimes we do. But that's just the mindset of this team. How can they help each other? How can they, you know, I've never heard anybody all season complain, but I didn't get my shots. And, I mean, we got some transfers of some guys that put up buckets that yeah. were dependent on to score points. And like you said, they came and we – and we. but Coach Adams done a great job in his staff of changing their mindset – hey, this is what we are, and this is what we're about. And it's been cool to be a part of that, um, to see those guys grow in that sense. And like I said, um, you can always add, you know, scoring to your game. But defense is something that's – it's got to be a part of you um, in a sense. And like I said, I think if you go watch the NBA, just like the NBA All-Star game, like I hate it, you know, and people will probably – Man, I love it, though. But I don't want to see 170 to 160. I think it's expectations, man. Like – I shouldn't say love. Love is a strong word. Um, I do enjoy watching Steph make 16 threes, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but they, people are stepping back and, like, that's what's wrong. With oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These There's kids no defense. Are watching, you know, these kids are watching these dudes go back and everybody moves out the way and dude throws it over his head. They do alley. Like, you know, it's just a false sense of yeah. why you got there. And that's the thing for me. Like, you got there because of – or not even anymore, really, it's voting. But you, you used to get there because of how you played the game. And now it's to the point where it's a popularity contest. They want to go see, you know what I'm saying? Like at yeah. the end of the game, I watched Steph shoot the ball six threes to try to break the record. They just give them the ball. I'm about that's it. Cool. I'm about it. Just for that yeah, specific cool, thing. Not the whole game, but just that specific thing. Like, I'm about it. But I get what you're saying, though. I really do. I really you do. Know? As a high school coach, man, we get these kids. The first thing they do, they're coming out shooting three because they watch this all-star game, 170 to 168. So um, I just, you know, in my opinion, I just, I wish that they would, uh, you know, just go out there and give it 100 Have fun, of course, don't get hurt. But, you know, make the all-star game what it's about. You get voted there because you're the best of the best. And uh, I think we've kind of lost sight in everything we've done, even the Pro Bowl. Like it used to be you were the best of the best. And I wish they kind of, you know, they might have them, but I wish they had incentives for something, you know, like, yeah. you know, yeah. NFC versus AFC, the winner, you get to play the Super Bowl at the NFC's place or vice versa. You get to play the, um, you know, uh, the, the, the basketball championships, whoever wins, you get to play on that side, just something to make those guys kind of play a little, play a little bit and see. Cause like I said, I would love to see all those dudes playing 110%, you know, like they play like our Texas tech boys and I got to see Steph and I got to see Giannis and LeBron out there really doing that. That would have been a crazy sight to see. And yeah. so um, I just – I think that's what's wrong with, uh, you know, upcoming, you know, kids see stuff and they don't realize all the, uh, you know, the work that they put in 
uh, behind the scenes, which is a lot, you know, and I respect them on that aspect, especially, you know, Kobe. I know it's off so subject, but just, you know, I talked to my kids about Kobe, just his work ethic. You know, people didn't see that. They just saw him scoring 81 points, but that dude had crazy work ethic. So, um, you know, I, I like that. And I kind of feel like our, you know, back on our, our Texas Tech boys, I just kind of feel like they have that mentality um, defensively, though. And I think it's I think it's cool as heck. You know, it kind of reminds me of the old Chicago Bears, um, yeah. you know, making the Super Bowl. They didn't always have the best, the most fanciest stuff, but they were doing what they were supposed to and what their team is about. And I think Coach Adams, like I said, when you go, you know what you're getting, but it sucks yeah. when you can't do anything about it. So I think that's freaking awesome for them to know. I know you're getting man, but we still can't do anything about it. That speaks volumes to the program, um, you know, that that's that's there and you know it, it's some of that people are going to be mad at me and probably talk trash about me but some of that like I said is the coach beard you know he got it started coach Adams came in and has oh, no, elevated has it. elevated no. it up you know but um like I said without him we wouldn't even be in this situation so I think we all have to um you know just remember that at the same time like he helped build because like I said I I used to go to text tech games at halftime and sit on the front row you know now yeah. you get there an hour before and be sitting in nosebleed. There's no extra seats for you to be. You might not even get in. Yeah. So it's, it's awesome to see where we've elevated. And like I said, it elevates the university. Um, Mm -hmm. And so a shout out to that program, those kids, and, you know, even the student section, like that's awesome. Best student section. I hear that all the time. Best student section in the nation, not not big 12, the nation. So um, I I, I think that uh, Tex Tech needs to reach out to the uh, swag surf guys and have them do it live. Have them. They have. Live. They have, man. They won't come. No, they have. They they've been there. They have. Yeah. Man, why did they? Didn't, they didn't blow that up, did they? Yeah. Well, they tried, but I think it was like right before COVID. So a lot uh, of people, a lot of people don't remember before COVID. To be honest. That's crazy. Yeah, that'd be. Yeah, they they've had them out there. Yeah, I forgot what their names are called, but yeah, they had them out there. Um, I remember I made sure to leave the press box area for that and go down to the student section. Cause I was a student at the time. So uh-huh. um, let's go have a little fun during halftime for that. So, but was yeah, they awesome? had them out there. Yeah. They had them out there. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, I do want to talk about that point. You uh, mentioned about the fact that the buy-in, right? Like there has to be a certain buy-in um, for Mark Adams in terms, not Mark Adams, but the team that plays for Mark Adams mm-hmm. and you know, I, I think that that's true at any level of any sport. You have to buy into what your coach is telling you, right? But I think it takes a special kind of person um, to buy into what Mark Adams is doing in the sense that it's not flashy. It's not the most like, oh, my God, I love watching this every game. Like, trust me, watching Texas Tech sometimes is hard to watch. Like, it is hard to watch just because, again, we are just so accustomed to, I mean, in a prime example, the football program, right? Like when it was humming, when you were there, what were y'all doing? Putting up 70, y'all mm-hmm. putting up 70. Y'all were still playing defense, but y'all were putting up 70. And so it's kind of the polar opposite now where like you had the air raid for football, but now in the, in the, in the golden age of football for Texas Tech, and now in the golden age of Texas Tech basketball, it's the polar opposite. You have like the lockdown Raiders or something. I don't even know what the hell we want to call them. Lockdown yeah. Raiders doesn't sound bad. Anyway, um, I think that that's something that like, it's it's just, cr- it takes a certain kind of person to do that. And you mentioned these guys that have come in here from bigger programs that they were the dudes and they were the guys that were supposed to be there primarily for offense. I mean, Devion Warren always comes to mind. Uh, you obviously have Bryson Williams. Kevin O'Banner's the same way, right? Like three of your top six players maybe seven players were the number one or number two options on quality teams last year. Um, Mm -hmm. Two more so than others. Um, But you just look at it and you're like, okay, are these guys really going to buy in? Because let's be honest, if you thought that all seven transfers were going to hit, you're crazy. You're Mm -hmm. absolutely crazy. And all of them have hit except for Sadar Calhoun. Like that's a crazy hit rate. Like, you think about it, Adonis Arms has exceeded expectations. Bryson Williams has exceeded expectations. You look elsewhere, you have O'Banner exceeded expectations. And then you have 
Marcus Santos Silva living up to expectations that he had last year, but then you have Malik Wilson, Bacho, Allen. They're all living up to expectations. You have so many guys that have just either met expectations that maybe you thought wouldn't or exceeded them. And that's something that a lot of programs can't say. Um, and I think it's a testament first and foremost to the players. For, give the players the credit first and foremost because they're the ones actually making the plays. And then secondly, the coaching staff in terms of identifying these players, in terms of can I put them in a role in a place to succeed on this roster and then actually doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of coaches struggle with, like identifying talent and not only identifying the talent, but identifying a place that they will succeed that will help the team, not just that individual player. And I think that this team has done that um, And this, you know, coaching staff is just I was skeptical of some of this coaching staff in the sense of some of them are making the jump. Um, I thought it would still be a really good coaching staff, but they've just absolutely blown me away with some of this. You know, people can say that I'm crazy for calling Barrett Peary um, an offensive mastermind. Listen, if you've watched Texas Tech basketball under Coach Beard, this is a drastically different offense, and it is so much easier to watch. They actually know what the hell a pick and roll is. Coach Beard mm -hmm. is still trying to figure that out to this mm -hmm. day. Um and so I, I think that just having a little bit more of tempo, allowing these guys to make decisions and not just feel like, oh, crap, we already know what this is going to do at the end of the shot clock. It's going to be in player X's hand and they're going to jack up a terrible shot. Does that still happen? Obviously, because the defense wins. But I think that this Texas Tech team, if we're talking about just expectations for them right now, I'm not trying to put them in this conversation because we know the result of 2019 that team is the best team in texas tech history until proven otherwise no team is close but in terms of expectations going into the tournament i have more expectations for this team if they're healthy going into march than i did for the 2019 team because i think that this team right now can literally guard can put five people on the floor that can guard one through five they're also very good offensively um, in terms of when they get going, do they struggle at times? Yeah, which is frustrating. But overall, you have more offensive weapons. You have a guy in Bryson Williams that maybe isn't on Jarrett Culver's level. In fact, he's not on Jarrett Culver's level, but he's still on an all Big 12 type level. And then you have so many surrounding pieces that know their role. And the scary part about it is I don't know if I have mentioned Terrence Shannon Jr. and Kevin McCuller once during this podcast. No. And, and I think that the last thing, too, is just the buy-in from the community. Like I said, it hasn't big been two. like that big since two. 2007. You know, it, it, and I don't know if people realize it, but it, it's a big difference when that thing is sold out and rocking. Um, and then when it's not sold out and rocking. Like I said, I, I can go back to the games of when we played Oklahoma State. It was blackout, totally black. Texas, when it was all black. Like, that plays a big part on – the guys and they come out there, the confidence level, what they do. Um, and it's also important. Like I said, it sucks to come out and not see the stands halfway, you know, all the way full. And I don't know if 2019, because I didn't get to go to any games, but I don't know if the stadium was rocking how it is. I don't know if oh, people yeah. had to come an hour ahead to, to do that, but that plays a big part. And, you know, that, that in a sense, that lets the players know, hey, we got something going on. Great. These people actually are starting to believe that plays a huge part. And I can't say that enough. Like I said, we have the best fans in the nation, hands down. But there is a couple of seasons where I knew it was not going to be sold out. I knew the community buy-in wasn't at an all-time high um, like it was, you know, in 2007, like it is right now in basketball and has been. Um, but like you said, that that shout-out to that program, to those kids, um, to everything that they're doing. So, like I said, the, the, the – you know, the world we live in right now, you got to win to get results, to get people to come, to get people excited. And these kids have done that. These This coaching staff has done that. So, um, like I said, community buy-in is a two-way uh, two way street in a sense, too. So, you know, you got to – people don't want to come watch. Uh, you put a product out there that's that's not, you know, not up to their level, whatever their level may be. Um, so, it's, it's been cool, like I said, to elevate the whole city of Lubbock just to see um, – you know, the hype everywhere I go, even when I go into town, just to see, you know, I see basketballs on the window. I see Texas Tech shirts, basketball, you know, and uh, hopefully we can get it to where, you know, baseball has been like that as well, but we can get to all our programs 
are on that level. But I mean, that is that is awesome to see and just know and drive by. Yeah, I've drove by the game and seen a long line. And even if I wanted to go to that game, I couldn't just pull over and go because it's it's sold out. So yeah. it's it's awesome. And like I said, it's kudos to um, the coaching staff, the players, but also the community for getting behind those kids and, um, you know, just supporting them like they do. Like I said, you know, you come play tech at home. It's a hard place to play. Uh, and I've always said that it's one of the hardest places when everyone's there into it. It's tough. I'll, and um, I think that's, you know, we got the best place in the nation. So um, it's awesome to see. And I'm just excited to continue to see how we build on this. Um, and like I said, this is his first year. I can only imagine Like we talked about with the recruits. I can only imagine what he's going to do next year. How many people will want to come be a part of what he's doing? Like he got these dudes, um, you know, at the last minute in a sense. Uh, so I'm excited. I think the future for um, all sports is bright, but um, definitely basketball and baseball has been doing what they're supposed to do. And like I said, I think it's getting to the point where people expect, like people are expecting them to go to the Sweet 16. Whereas in 2019, we were like, man, this is a great team. We hope, we're hoping that they get to the, you know, the round of 32. We're hoping they get to the Sweet 16. And I think that we're creating a culture um, that people are like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll be in the Sweet 16. Whether that's fair or not, probably not. But we're creating that culture, and I think it's, it's, it's awesome. And um, if you ask me, I think Texas Tech is, is becoming one of the best basketball programs in the nation, you know, year in and year out. And so it's, it's awesome to get to be a part and watch and, um, you know, and to get these kids. I know how hard they work for them to be rewarded for their hard work. So, you know, I have nothing but respect for those guys. And. I always have my, even though I can't shoot, I'm gonna have my shirt on rooting them, them young men on. Uh, that's all I can do. I can't do anything else in basketball. It's just I could just shoot. Um, I'm the epitome of a five ten white male. Yeah. Well, if it makes you feel better, I'm a six foot black man that can't shoot or dunk. So, I mean, I'm pulling know. from thirty. I'm pulling <laughs> from thirty. That's my go-to. Um, but yeah, again, want to recap before we get out of here. Again. Texas Tech is now the number one defense in the country. An update on where they stand in some pretty big rankings. Net ranking, they are number seven in the country. Ken Palm, sixth. Haslam metrics, eight. The committee ranking is 10, albeit that was before um, this last game against Oklahoma. So that's not going to change until, well, Selection Sunday because they only do that once. Joe Lenardi has Texas Tech as the two seed, but in San Diego, Baylor is ahead of them on the two seed line still. CBS Sports hasn't updated theirs yet, but they are currently a three seed in San Diego, are the Red Raiders. But if you ask me, you want to be a Kansas fan, the Big 12, you want to win the Big 12, no doubt about it. But if that means that you don't get a shot to play in Fort Worth and then in San Antonio, I'd much rather have a chance, much easier chance to go to the national championship than win a regular season Big 12 title. That's just me. Um, but I can understand how people would disagree with that. But, hey, we'll wrap it up there. Where do you follow this man on uh, Twitter, sir? Where do you follow you? Hold oh, no. on. Before I get there, RC, I just want to say this real quick. What's CBS. Up? I know y'all hear my man saying that, he, you know, he likes y'all. Um, don't come calling because he's not coming. Uh, I just wanted to <laughs> throw that out there. I know CBS, I know they're watching this podcast, listening, and I know they're going to try to swoop you in. Um, like we said, you know, Troy might get swooped up, and I'm tired of people coming and swooping up, you know, swooping up people. So I just want to throw that out there. CBS, lay off my man. He ain't coming. He is not coming to you. All right. But uh, like I said, before we get out of here, you can follow me on Twitter at Coach L L E O N G. You know, All right. that man, that's Lyle. I, apparently, I'm getting recruited by CBS. I wish I would have gotten the email. Apparently, I wasn't CC'd in that. I'm blocking it, brother. That's why I blocked. Oh, uh, okay. You, you block the transaction. It takes three days to get to my email in terms of all that stuff. Yeah. I got it. Kevin Hart. I got you. With my luck. I cut on the TV and see you with uh, Tony up there, man. I'd be furious. Oh, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I wouldn't be mad about it, brother. <laughs> I wouldn't be mad. That's a nice paycheck. That's a nice paycheck. That's Lyle. He's hyping me up. I hype him up too. I'm RC. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Be sure to follow me on Twitter over at RCNB323. You know where to file, follow him, excuse me. That's Coach L-L-E-O-N-G over on Twitter. We'll be back next week, hopefully talking about another Texas Tech home win. Excuse me, road win, but it might as well be a home win. You're playing in Fort Worth. We know Texas Tech's going to take over that. Um, 
Again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it right now. Turn it gray. We're going to be posting a lot more podcasts here and have a few guests on as well, especially around the NFL. And with the, do you realize the NFL draft combines next week? No, I didn't. That's, yeah, that's me neither crazy. until a little earlier today. So um, we'll uh, keep you updated on a few Red Raiders out there as Demarcus Fields will be out there, Dawson Deaton, and then, of course, one of the best wide receivers in Texas Tech history. No, I'm not talking about you, Lyle. Not talking about you. I'm talking about Eric Izakama. Lyle was better than Eric Izakama. He won't say it, but I will. Again, that's Lyle. I'm RC. I appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll catch y'all next week here right on the Back to 12 podcast.